scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Essentially, scripture contains three basic things. Number one, scripture contains promises. In scripture, we find the promises God's bond, God's commitment. Promises define the boundaries of God's bond and commitment to man. Number two, in scripture we find principles, what the Bible calls the ways of God. His modus operandi, his methodologies, God's strategy for achieving results. Are we together now? So when we study scripture, he shows us, scripture shows us a road map that leads from desires to manifestations so i am able to study from scripture how to obtain hebrews 11 gives us an archive of those who use these truths to obtain results it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen he says for by it elders obtained principles the principles of god are a representation of his system of justice so that whoever can find them regardless background regardless gender regardless the disadvantage before that time once you find it the bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh i'm giving a background to my session it's important that we appreciate the ministry of the word for these reasons that the word of god scripture contains promises Number two, it contains principles. We can study the word of God and learn not only the character of God, we can learn the way he operates. So we gain mastery in this kingdom by an accurate understanding of the ways of God. This is what builds up into what we call dominion. Dominion happens to the degree to which we comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. Number three, we find in scripture prophecy. Prophecies are captured in scripture. He does not leave us in limbo as to the future. He wants believers to understand their destiny, both short term and long term. And we find the entire scope of a believer's journey, past, present, and future in scripture. Because if our hope is only in this life, the Bible declares that we are of all men most miserable. So scripture contains prophecy. It lets us know what is going to happen to us after now so that it does not leave us in fear because the character of love is that it casts out fear and if god should leave us in the dark without knowing what the future holds we will walk in fear and fear has the capacity to keep men in bondage if it is true that god is love then there should not be fear around him so everything that makes for the exiting of fear in the believer's life uncertainty brings fear this is why faith is the cure for fear. Our persuasion that even though I am not there, I can rest my faith on a God who is Alpha Omega, not and Omega, Alpha Omega. He is not the beginning and the end. He is both the beginning and at the same time. He doesn't have to walk from the beginning to leave the end. He can still be in the beginning while at the end. So there's no such thing as God, what, 
you know, as though he needs to leave the beginning to quickly peep into the future. His realm does not have past, does not have present, does not have future. His realm is not even eternity. God's realm is called now. That's his realm. Everything is bare before him. Are we together? So when we study scripture, listen carefully. Why am I saying this? This is a conference and sadly because God is helping to build the body of Christ. We must help believers understand the importance of scripture. The Bible scripture is God's recommended pathway to knowing him and understanding his ways. Scripture is not the only way we know the realm of the spirit. We can route through other sources and other channels. But the Bible leaves us with a disclaimer that if you follow any other way outside of scripture, there is a side effect to your experience. There will be a side effect to your experience. When Jesus came, he said, I am the way. The way means the authorized channel. I lead you to the truth, reality. That reality ministers life to you. He says, no man comes to the Father. That means I am also a bridge. You never experience the Father except through me. I am the administrator of eternal life. Apostle John was speaking and he says, this is the record that God had given us eternal life. He said, but he structured the administration of that life such that you must encounter the Son before you have that life. Are we together? So do not frown at any time you have to sit to learn scripture learning scripture is an is a way of deliverance deliverance from ignorance the bible says true knowledge shall the just be delivered now that god has given your conference such a powerful title we have to explore through scripture the only way we open gates or bring them down the only way we possess our possession the only way we advance in this scripture is to go to this manual and find out God's way of doing it. Mastery in this kingdom happens when we understand the secrets that are behind stories, not the stories themselves. A story in scripture never benefits you until the mystery behind it is unraveled. This is how we excel. Are we together now? So we explore scripture and we find there God's ways. How do we bring down gates? How do we bring down mountains? Is it unusual for a man to be in an experience where there are all kinds of gates and instruments of resistance? Scripture is that lecturer that enlightens us, brings us into the place of knowledge. I commend you to God, he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified are we blessed having established this i like us to look at the book of joshua through my session the book of joshua is a very interesting book in the bible not only because i'm named after that book but then <laughs> hallelujah it is a very interesting book because it is one of the books in the Bible that shows the valiancy of faith. It shows how God is able to pick a man and guide that man and scatter through that book are mysteries. The book is very open to show us what happens when we walk in keeping with God's ways. And it is also open to show us that just because you won yesterday does not mean you win tomorrow. You only win to the degree to which you walk in keeping with the truths that make for victory. Are we blessed? So Joshua chapter 6 please. And then we'll back up to chapter 5. And then I'll just pick one thing for tonight. We'll share and we'll pray. Are we still together? Joshua chapter 6. Let's start from verse 1. We'll read with King James and then if there's any other version, if that is possible, if we can look at it after we read with King James, maybe Amplified or NIT, I want you to see something there that would be the basis for my teaching proper tonight. The Bible says, Now Jericho was strictly shut up. It was closed 
Why? Because of the children of Israel. There was a reason why it was closed. As a result, nothing went in and nothing went out. Is there any other version we can look at? Just verse 1. The Bible says, Now Jericho, a fenced town with high walls, was tightly closed because of the Israelites. None went out or came in. Can we look at, um, I wish we can see NIV. Beautiful. No, the scripture you just, the version you just used now. NLT, thank you. Read with me, everyone. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly because, stop, stop, stop. Don't rush. We, this is a conference. There was a reason why the people shot that place. The Bible says these people had fear operating in them. So even though they had creativity before and they could build such a wall, fear paralyzed them in a moment. And for the fear of Israelites, they shot that place that was once a beauty to neighboring nations. The Bible says five chariots could stand on the wall. What kind of a wall is that? Imagine a wall where five chariots could stand on. If you collapse it, it is still a wall. Now the question is what kind of motivation was given to those people to be able to build such a formidable structure? Are we together now? Once upon a time they came to that place. They advanced to that region. And the Bible says they were able to build this formidable structure with strong gates and towers. If you read, I wish we had time, you will see the security architecture of Jericho. Pastor, the security architecture of Jericho was second to none. The nation of Israel, even though a covenant people, they sneaked in and went to Rahab. In a moment, the news had gotten to the king that some people came. Their location was picked with accuracy. What sort of a city is this? Follow me carefully. Don't trivialize Jericho. I know it was destroyed, but let's learn something from it first. They sent somebody. He came to Jericho. They slipped in and met a harlot. And there was such an intelligence system in Jericho. With precision, the king had received the news. Some men came from Israel. They came to spy. How was their motive discerned? And then they met Rahab. She had to coin a story. And he said, pursue them beyond the Jordan. And he opened the gates they went and closed now I'm, I'm trying to help you appreciate the fact that this city was not built by weak men but one information entered their camp and the moment that information entered their camp progress died a people who built such a fence a people who had such security architecture somebody introduced one information give us that scripture again now you will understand what you are reading now the gates what did they close help me what did they close the access that controlled their commerce the access that controlled their moving in and going out suffered not because the gate spoiled not because anything bad happened to it simply because of one factor was introduced they were afraid of the Israelites the Bible says as a result no one was allowed to go in no one was allowed to go out we're discussing gates we'll bring down Jericho later but this night I want you to understand what can happen to a people how can a man be so powerful so saved so intelligent so creative with results to show and then just one information is introduced into the life of that man and he will prefer stagnation to advancement 
that a man prefers to remain the same let our economy suffer yes let our reputation go down yes remember they only heard they had not seen them it was just a rumor that is possible you may be liable to an attack and because of that every activity that makes for progress suffered everybody say fear shout it again this night we are dealing with some of the forces before we talk about these gates there seem to be something that fear is able to do to men listen carefully that even though it is an invisible enemy the presence and the devastating effect of it can be physical and you can relate with Joshua chapter 1 when we start with that book now they were mourning Moses please give it to us Joshua chapter 1 the Bible says now after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord it came to pass that the Lord speak unto Joshua the son of Nun Moses' minister saying Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over prophesy to someone say go over one more time say go over the guy was sitting there in fear what do i do with a people so great how do i lead these people to a place of destiny please keep that scripture and god said my servant is dead now arise go over this jordan thou and all these people unto the land which i do give them even unto the children of Israel. Verse 3. It says every place. Hallelujah. That the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That I have given unto you. As I said unto Moses. Someone shout amen. Amen. From the wilderness and this Lebanon. Even to the great river. You know. Let me pause for a minute and let's celebrate God here. Look at God sharing land. As if there are no enemies there. You see, when God talks to you, he talks like he's talking to himself. He does not talk like he's seen any limitation. When you build that house, give this one to this church. And while he's saying that all you have in your account is 5,000 naira, and he will never talk about that limitation. This is God allocating lands with giants and fierce people. Please sit down. Give us that scripture. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Hittites, the great sea towards the going down of the sun, it shall be your coast. And there shall no man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Hold on. This was the reason why he removed the sword when that angel appeared. Because of this word. God, you gave me a covenant. Who is this man? Who are you? And the man had to answer. He said, no, no, no. Are you for us or against us? Because a word was given to him that as I go, I don't know what I will face, but I know one thing that I'm victorious. There is a word before me. We are exploring scripture. Please leave that scripture. And then he says, verse 5, I will not fail you nor forsake you. Verse 6, be strong another word for be strong is fear not and be of good courage now that I've spoken to you about advancement there is something that is in men I want to take it out of you otherwise you will not make progress now that I have encouraged you I have shown you the allocations of your destiny there is something that is common to all men I need to go through a surgery with you if I do not remove it all this will remain as prophecy mountains will remain mountains prophecy will remain prophecy dreams will remain dreams visions will remain dreams visions it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people you shall divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only thou be strong and very why would God emphasize such a thing he said mr. man I don't want to threaten you but there are things you are going to see on the way there are things you are going to hear on the way 
there are people you are going to see on the way do not mind Jeremiah chapter 1 please sit down Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 Jeremiah now we have seen how God was calling and preparing Joshua let's see what he did to little Jeremiah and before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee he says before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and ordained to ordain means to commission to ordain means to legitimize an operation I ordained you as a prophet to the nations are we together next verse then said I the young boy is speaking now ah Lord God behold I cannot speak why for I am a child I love the Lord he rebuked him immediately he says say not I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak next verse do you see it here again there is something about great men that if a surgery does not happen to you you can have dreams and have visions but when you start that journey without this spiritual surgery you may not arrive he told him be not afraid be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver you saith the Lord Jericho a land that is so that is a, as an architectural masterpiece with such level of intelligence and security but as soon as fear was introduced into that system not even their creativity could function immediately everything paralyzed listen to me tonight in the name of Jesus in this place the Lord has sent me to perform this spiritual surgery and and crush the spirit of fear out of someone's life and out of someone's destiny that's why I told you don't worry we are coming to gates but this night there is a lesson we must learn please give us chapter 6 and verse 1 again NLT now the gates of Jericho now the gates of creativity now the gates of advancement now the gates of progress suddenly became shut because the people were afraid now the gates of higher levels of ministry now the gates of greater exploits in ministry now the gates of signs and wonders now the gates of the healing anointing now the gates of supernatural manifestations became short because in as much as you are anointed and blessed as you began to advance you heard that there is a spirit that can destroy men you heard that there is an influence that can come and interrupt your growth fear is dangerous was it not fear that stopped the crusades was it not fear that stopped the instruction from God go and lay hands on the sick what if I pray and nothing happens what if people record it and they put it online what if they record my failure when in the days of social media what if I pray for that dead body and because of that the gate was shut nothing went out and nothing went in in one minute I'd like you to pray that every spirit of fear over my life Oh, please be serious over my destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I come against you by the God of heaven I come against you by the God of heaven following online pray in the name of Jesus the son of the living God Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. 
Hebrews chapter 2, please. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. We're learning from Apostle Paul. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. We can go back to King James now. Hebrews chapter 2. The Bible says, For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, which is the devil. Verse 15. Read with me, please. One, two, read. And deliver them who through fear of death. Fear of anything leads to bondage. Fear of success. Fear of advancement. Please pay attention because there are many of you here in spite of the prophetic word that continues to come from the man of God over your life there are ministries locked up within your spirit there are mantles and anointings there are graces spiritual investments after the fasting after the prayer after the night vigil now it's time to advance and fear comes and shuts the gate nothing goes out nothing goes in listen to me the bible tells us in second timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 that fear is a spirit there is a psychology to fear but fear second timothy fear is a spirit second timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 for god had not given look up please that means if you ever find fear in your life you received it as a gift someone gave it but god is saying in that giving i am innocent i'm not the one who gave it listen carefully fear only comes to receive us it is not only money that comes to receive us. Hmm. We are dealing with giving and receiving here. Please give us that scripture. God had not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us power, love. Look at the tripartite forces that must exist for one spirit to live. Don't you downplay fear. That for a man to deal with fear, there has to be a revelation of power. There has to be a revelation of love. There has to be a revelation of transformation. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is given. It can be rejected. It can be received. This is very powerful. The assignment of fear, listen carefully, the assignment of fear, fear works like a prophetic word because when you become afraid, you give power to what you are afraid of. Listen carefully, the only way what you are afraid of can have power over you is to bring you to a psychological state where you are afraid fear is confidence in the object of the fear it is true it's not just a cliche it is true that when you manifest fear you are giving confidence to the object of the fear what is the purpose of fear to gain access to your imagination to gain access to your creativity to gain access to your expectations job chapter 3 and verse 25 job 3 25 job said for the thing which i greatly fear what happened to it is come upon me that means fear has magnetic properties Fear can attract to your life what you are afraid of. You are afraid of death. 
you are afraid of accident you are afraid of plane crash you are afraid of failure you are afraid of this and that and job said this is a mystery that the thing that a man can greatly fear is the thing he attracts to his life the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come unto me so when god begins to launch men listen carefully after giving them all the encouragement he will tell them there is something i need to take out of you it is not unusual in men to fear but then when you begin to fear you will never be able to do so much fear can impede the passion the force the zest to move forward because when God gives you instructions he will open up to you a destiny that only God can fulfill God cannot give you a destiny that men fulfill he will give you a destiny that only God can fulfill why because he's the one who will walk with you to make it happen please pay attention this night the purpose of fear is to gain access to your imagination when you begin to think fear the devil uses the sense realm and all the things that happen around you to plant fear in you can i tell you what fear does fear can deflate your hope fear can deflate your expectations all of a sudden the zest and the fire you have to move forward suddenly goes down if you will ever raise the dead in your life your first assignment is to have the courage to stand before one if you will ever buy a land in your life your first assignment is to have the courage to look at one land and say how much and they mention an amount you are almost falling down and you say no way mm -mm. listen carefully can I tell you this behind the exploits of champions is a revelation that has given them an indefinite immunity against fear champions are men but they are not ordinary men they are men who have received a spiritual vaccination against fear they have sustained the ability to defy fear they have mastered fear and they know how to conquer it and so they move from one level of triumph even to another you will never be able to bear glory i can imagine what happened to your wonderful man of god when god sent him here do you realize that once upon a time this facility was a flat ground yet your pastor was already sharing rooms on a bare ground let this one be an office when you see champions operate they look like madmen but there, there is an audacity that knowing god produces let me tell you believe what i'm telling you because if it's success you are looking for i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm sorry there are serious giants and gates giants are not only metals there are people also who are gates when they stop your head, oh ye gates, the gates were not metals, they were people, they spoke back. They said, who wants to enter? We are not used to opening, no. Can I tell you something? Oh David, one day you will stand before Goliath. The key to the throne is in the pocket of Goliath. You must have the courage to bring him down, to get to the throne. We live in a world that is so risk averse, so fearful, full of prophecy, full of fasting, full of prayer. But when it's time to move, this is why many. Remain stagnated forever. There are CEOs today who are supposed to. Be after another. And yet they do not move. There are people who are supposed to be doing exploits in ministry. Not from a standpoint of flesh. There are things that are supposed to be blessing nations today. 
if I write, what is the guarantee? We live in a A world of guarantees. I cannot. Can you guarantee me? Learn how to drive. Give me a guarantee. What if I. I am the child of God. That I'm no longer a slave to fear. sit down. Let me touch on something and we'll pray. Is God helping you tonight? Take off that fear once you are sitting. You came for a conference. After this conference, we should hear testimonies that in one week, you carried five years through courage and put it in that one week. You smash every gate before you. You open the gate of... Sit down. There are three fears that you must overcome in your life if you want to make progress. There are three fears. There is no one who has done much for the kingdom who has not conquered these three levels and dimensions of fear. Are you ready? Number one, the fear of the past. The fear of the past Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 the past is the past can can administer fear to you here's what Paul said brethren I count myself to have I, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the things that are look at me Almost every part of your body, you can move it front and back, except your eyes. Because it was not in God's design that there should be any reason. You can move your leg back and front, your hand back and front, but the eyes was designed to look forward ever, forward only. If you want to turn your eyes, you must turn your head and turn part of your body. That's too much inconvenience. God designed it that way so that you will know that it's not his will for you to continue to turn back. Biologically, it is easier to look forward than to turn back. Listen carefully. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Can I tell you this? Fear is a very dangerous spirit. It can carry yesterday and want to relieve it in your life today. Yes, you failed yesterday. You started a company and it failed. You started ministry and it failed. You organized a crusade and you laid hands on the sick and it looked like nothing happened. You left that crusade ground as if you were returning from a funeral. You went back home and you said, God, did you call me? And so chances are that when God instructs you again, yesterday, the memory of yesterday has such a passion to leap into your today. You have to obtain grace from God to cut that string that connects you to yesterday. There are many people who would have been doing so much for the kingdom. But yesterday, you want to rise and yesterday tells you, did your father not try this? Did your, he, he, are you the only pastor in your area? Did they not try living by divine health? Did they not try tithing? Did they not try giving? And when yesterday overwhelms you, you are unable to do anything. The fear of the past. There are many people who cannot rise up today and do great things because the voice of yesterday seems louder than the passion that will move them today and tomorrow. I came tonight joining faith with your pastor. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, every connection between you and yesterday, we cut it forever. We cut it forever. Listen to me. When Nathaniel heard about Jesus, 
he laughed and said can anything good come out of Nazareth I hope you know Nathaniel was not lying there was a track record he was speaking based on facts Dr. Munro of blessed memory he says the fact is the present state of a thing the truth is that thing as designed by God the fact is the present state of anything you did ministry yesterday and you failed you prayed for the sick you failed you started a business you failed you went to school you failed you applied for a job you failed and the devil can use those things to impede you he will use the voice of men and he will tell you you cannot make progress but he speaks to you tonight his majesty fear not when they came to Jesus and Jesus was wandering gave them a word over the catch they said master there is a history we have toiled all night before you came we've been doing it he says but nevertheless somebody say nevertheless yes. prophesy say nevertheless yes. yes I prayed for you yesterday and you were not healed but it's not the yesterday version that is coming to you now between yesterday and today Saul has encountered Samuel I know that I did not have the prophetic grace to know where the donkey was missing but while you are rejoicing over the weak Saul he has met Samuel and received an anointing and is now one of the prophets listen this is one of the dangers of being around people who used to know you because they always think the version of you they knew is the version that remains they, they did not meet the version that has received an impartation they did not meet the version that has prayed and fasted they didn't meet the version that has now been mentored They met you when you just came into Abuja. Ignorant of spiritual principles. A non-titer, you are not a giver, not established in the house of God. So your, your lack of results, well, that's the testimony they have. Every time they mention your name, they trace it to that. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. Don't talk about the dead Jesus when he's already resurrected. as at when they met you January you had not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost you didn't seem to take God seriously but let me tell you this from January till now they didn't know you came to word alive they didn't know the fire that came from this altar upon your spirit It is very natural for people to trace you to the version of you they used to know and that can be dangerous some of those people can even be your family members when they hear that this man is now serving God they laugh and they say the last time we checked this guy was a broke failure who did not know God what suddenly happened Oh, do not laugh at Samuel. While he's looking for the missing donkey, there is an angel leading him to encounter a prophet and then encounter a grace that will make him king. Go and ask any successful man who has made constructive advancement in the kingdom. They will tell you they had to conquer the fear of yesterday. Who predicted your failure without prophesying it and they were right so many times hear me there are many of us under the sound of my voice listening to me while you are hearing me speak the Holy Ghost is telling you this is what I've been showing you in dreams this is what I've been showing you in visions that if you do not rise your family will never rise because the mantle of the liberty the advancement of your family is upon your shoulder but fear every time you want to rise you say oh god i'm a stammerer stammerer moses oh god i want to rise but abraham time has gone i am too old 
holy men kill all of our excuses the fear of the past the first time we organized a crusade the car spoiled on the way three hours to the crusade ground to the crusade time we had not arrived and we didn't have money to call any mechanic it took faith and worship to get that car back when we got true story when we got to that crusade ground the ladies who were cooking were also the ladies in the choir we didn't have any luxury of hiring anybody the bills were paid by faith you, you understand what I'm saying when they finish the crusade you tell everybody go and then you who said God sent you you now have to wait and defend you make your calling and your election sure so chances are that after such a horrible experience when God says go again you say God I'm tired of looking like a fool before this world God speaks to you and tells you you're going to become a mighty vessel in the hands of God they gave you Bible study in your house to lead you forgot every scripture they gave you one week to rehearse and pray the only thing you remembered was opening prayer the jotting disappeared and you messed up and your father you know there's how parents look at you with compassion mixed with disappointment is this the person who is going to take over from me and you return back and your loved one said no problem you have a certificate there's an opening somewhere job because it doesn't look like this ministry will work and you return back and God tells you are you ready for us to continue the lecture he does not even talk about your failure you came for a conference the Lord is speaking to you can I tell you this the reason why there are very few people who ever succeed in this kingdom is because there are few people who have the courage to look at yesterday and say I refuse to be emotionally connected to you I wave you goodbye and I force you to wave me back I failed yesterday but the prophetic grace is still there I laid hands on the sick and they were not healed I know to break free from the past the courage to break free from the past you have good or bad they can do the same thing to you are we together chances are that you are born again and you love God filled with the Holy Spirit you return back to an area where you grew up and you see all your friends that perhaps maybe you used to live your life maybe a wayward life together with them and they say we hear that they call you reverend now and they laugh and clap and say you mean God has God all God's army have, be, have died for God to find you and you feel stupid for answering the call when they say opening prayer and you say they don't even close their eyes because based on your version of you yesterday can I tell you this when God allows people to laugh at you it's not to mock you is to be witnesses so that when he honors you they can say we were there mm -mm -mm -mm. we were there this one did not fake it we saw him when he was failing God allowed your failure public so that your honor will also be public the fear of the past sit down please few minutes we're almost done just give me five minutes and we're done tonight the second kind of fear that you must conquer is the fear of the present the fear of the present another word the fear of being controversial <laughs> goodness my god the emotional discomfort or the emotional comfort that comes with looking good in the eyes of men look up please let me teach you something if you want to be great in life 
you must obtain grace from God to build a wall of spiritual immunity against all kinds of expectations of men. It is better to serve God and fear God sincerely. You will lose too many things in your life trying to please men. Let me give you an advice. When your life is excellent, both God and men will rejoice with you. But can I give you an honest advice? You must obtain grace from God to focus on God and your destiny. Many of us love men so much, you would rather fail God and have a good name with men. Rather fail God. Do you have the courage to survive the controversy of the prophecy upon your life? Oh Mary, how did you get pregnant? Tell us the truth. What happened? I'm an innocent young virgin. An angel suddenly appears to me and says a ghost is coming. I am innocent. To the point where Joseph said, I'm sorry. I love you sincerely. You know I'm a responsible man. But this, this, this embarrassment is too much. Just when he was about to leave her, he had a dream. And he said, no, Joseph. This woman is surviving something and that which is coming out of her is that which is destiny. Can I tell you this? If you do not obtain grace to respect your vision and your prophecy more than your reputation, you must respect the prophecy upon your life more than your reputation. The prophecy upon your life will make you do things sometimes that you will look controversial. What do you mean by go around the city seven times. Do you know what it means to watch an adult go around the city seven times to bring down a fence? Is that how it is done? Do you know what it means to empty your account and say God said you have a wife and children? You know what it means for your relatives to hear that news? That God gave an instruction to resign from your job. The controversy that comes with the honor of vision and prophecy. If anyone ever told you it's a bed of roses to become a champion, think again. Behind these crowns that you so admire is audacity and courage. Abraham, take now your son. Go to a place I will show you where, oh God, keep going. The fact that you want me to kill my son Question, when Abraham was done killing his son, what will he tell the radio station? What will he tell the TV ministry? What will he tell the authorities over his life? That God said you should kill your son? Does God behave that way? I'm describing the journey that some of you are in right now. God gave you an assignment to fast two months. And while you're fasting, someone is already calling you and saying, look, Wisdom is profitable to that. This thing you are doing with your life. Even you, you don't know the name of I'm not talking about foolishness. I'm talking about divine direction. Are we together? Yes. There are some of you, just when people are rushing to move forward, God says, you remain here. And for three years, you are in the same position. And do you know sometimes God does not give you the complete answer. So when men call you, you still look stupid. Give me the correct logical answer. The only thing I know is that I had him. He said for two years, keep supporting pastor and his wife. That is it. So what about the dreams and the visions you saw? I don't know. He's not spoken to me. Do you know the courage to move forward is the courage to withstand the controversy that comes with prophecy. Vision speak in the end, not the beginning. Are we blessed? I've had the honor and the privilege of talking with extremely great and successful people, both in the faith, in the business world, in politics, and unanimously, Christians and non-Christians, they will tell you that they had to withstand the courage. There are times that as a man of God, you may not have money to eat or to do whatever, and yet someone comes to you for counseling 
suddenly wisdom comes you will impart grace you are solving the problem of others and say okay god what about my own and he's silent he's saying just keep moving father this sickness that is plaguing my child can there be a way out and heaven is silent another person comes and boom word of knowledge you are solving their problems and you lock the door they said this man you are so powerful and you say lord it's us again and god keeps quiet I reckon that the sufferings Romans chapter 8 let me teach you the way of champions oh great ones because these are some of the messages you will not hear again but this is how great men are made you came to this conference to be made mm. there is a way that people rise in this kingdom it is the reason why through the sacrifice of that death when they rise they don't just rise with an anointing there is a throne in heaven that backs them demons are testaments of their rising and the things they go through jesus i know paul i know who are you some of you are crying don't be ashamed i didn't come to make you cry i came to show you the truth if it is glory you want to come out of you can you drink of his cup and be baptized with his baptism there are things you cannot cast away you only obtain grace to pass through did you hear what i said Yes, sir. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 fear not O Israel I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine verse 2 it says when thou passest through the waters I will be with you I won't take the water away I will be with you when you go through the river it shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire it shall not burn you the making of the great it's a very difficult spiritual process. You want to birth glory? There is a relationship between death and glory. We're dealing with fear. The fear of the present. The fear of the present. What gives me the guarantee that as I do ministry now, I will succeed? What gives me the guarantee that partners will come and hold my hands? What gives me the guarantee that with 300,000 Naira, if I start this building project, will I not become a mockery to everybody? And heaven is saying, move. The signs follow. They don't go before you. Start moving. The river does not part until you are inside. Are we together? Look at me. Everything that is glorious moves against status quo everything that has prophecy and destiny is usually unusual in its manifestation do you have the courage to endure do you have the courage to not try to defend yourself even while you move god told you you have a bank you have failed and failed and failed and failed and someone says come i will give you a job let's stop punishing your wife and yet you want to sleep and you have the vision of the bank again and God is saying I have spoken it and it will happen go and read about the global brands you see all over the world don't just read their success stories read their failure stories go and read about the men and the women of God that you honor in the body of Christ today and see the scars that are on them testaments of endurance time will fail me to talk of Gideon Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shot the mouth of lions but they entered the den of lions your Jesus the grave where death finishes is also where resurrection starts resurrection does not happen outside the grave you want to experience resurrection power it only happens to those who are in the grave the last time I came here to preach I taught you something about the mystery of the prison I told you the prison is where both good and bad people meet the fear of the present lastly for tonight and then we'll pray the fear of the future the third fear that you must overcome 
this is especially true for people who are already bearing fruit can i tell you this please look up most times when you are producing results exceptional results it gets to a point where you start becoming afraid of your results do you know why because when you rise to the top the fear now is to finish and to finish well most times when people pray for great people their prayer is may you finish well now that you have shown us that you can conquer yesterday and you can conquer today our prayer for you is that you finish well can i tell you this the hand that lifted you can keep you even till you finish be careful because sometimes you can hear men and they tell you stories of people who did not finish well they may be right and they may be well-meaning but can i tell you there is a covenant that brought you thus far and that covenant is able to keep god is not only a giver he's a keeper he's a keeper but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded the bible says that he is able to keep that which is committed to him against that day what gives you a guarantee that this great church and your pastor will still be standing 20 30 40 years from now there is the grace that keeps listen to me most successful people are afraid of their future they are not afraid of their past they are not afraid of today but what if this happens what if a pandemic comes and my business goes down can i tell you this it is it is more it is more painful and embarrassing to rise up and go down it's better that you remain down you were once a billionaire you were once on fire you were once a prophet you were once packing up crusades with signs and wonders so most times when people succeed that fear comes will i last what will become of my children what will the newspaper say about me tomorrow huh. The Lord is my light and he's the light of my life. I will not be afraid. The hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end. No fear. I will not be afraid. Listen. I bring you words of comfort if it is by kingdom principles you rose I want to tell you those principles are potent to keep you to the end that when the fire goes up and down when the vicissitudes of life goes up and down you are still standing in ministry only the world that is built on a rock and sand but if your life is built on a rock you need not be afraid listen to me this is my conviction as a man of God this must be your conviction sincere people will meet you and say I pray that God keeps you all this is how so 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 person started but unfortunately this is how so 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 person started this is how so 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 bank started this is how so 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 started when they say those things, appreciate them with truth, but turn back and have confidence about the future. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave today. I leave. To praise your name, I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Please rise up on your feet. We're about round here. For I know the thoughts. That I think over what a life. 
over Reverend Godwin and his wife, over the membership of this church. I'm not confused about what I'm thinking about them. The pandemic, yes, sir. The economy of nations, yes, sir. I still know the thoughts that I think. He calls them thoughts of peace and not of evil. There are people who think evil of others. They laugh with you, but they are hoping something bad happens as a negative prophecy. God is not one of them. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you an... Hold on. He didn't say to give you an end. The end is not guesswork. The end is expected. I have programmed it already. I am Alpha Omega. Can I tell you this? Believers, hear me. Many of you who are under the mentorship of this great man and his wife, do not be afraid of what you are becoming. You are being built on the word and you may not look like it but find strength. There is a making. When a woman is cooking, sometimes all you see is water and you don't really know what is. Is it yam? Is it rice? Just be patient. As that fire under is working on that pot, suddenly an aroma that begins to attract you from the parlor. What in the world is going on in this kitchen? Everybody say making. Oh, the maker is making you. Salt is not the only thing that will be added there. There are ingredients that you add only towards the end. Women, am I correct? One ingredient in five minutes can change the narrative of that soup. Mm. Hear me? Just because the anointing of your call has not come yet does not mean it will not come. Keep moving. One day while you are serving like you are doing every day, one day while you are praying like you are doing every day, conquering fear to move forward. And then that grace will rest upon you and the nations will be ready to hear you. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. It was fear, not a physical army, that made Jericho to hide. They never saw a physical army with swords, yet but they just heard the same way you heard that there are people who don't live long the same way you heard that there are people who serve God though and yet it looks like their end be careful what you hear be careful what you see define your realities by the word of God I have heard that people trust God and they still become broke failures. I have heard that people trust God as men of God. They serve God sincerely and yet it looks like there is no consolation to their Christian experience. Be careful. It was the hearing of the ear that made people who should advance with such investment. Did you know the treasures that were in Jericho? By the time the wall of Jericho fell down, look the kind of treasure that they met. Yet in the midst of that treasure, what happened? They lost. Right now, we are going to pray. Because in the name of Jesus, I came releasing my faith with your pastor. It is time for someone's destiny to open up. Some of you, because of fear, you close the notebook the Holy Ghost asks you to buy. There was a notebook you bought that every time he comes to you, you write matters of destiny. For months now, you've not opened it. Go back this night, after this conference, regardless what you heard. By the time I was writing this apostle, my mother was still alive. My father was still alive. How could God let them die? I don't think he's faithful. I don't believe those visions. We are saying faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, faithful are you, faithful. We are saying, Faithful are you, faithful are you, Lord, faithful are you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? The spirit of fear. Listen to me. I'm not here to talk about myself. But this man you see standing before you. I cannot begin to tell you the dangerous instructions that God has given me in my life. The things to do that if I ever failed in those instructions, that testimony will be a memorial and a warning to nations. And yet, by faith, we closed our eyes away from our backgrounds. We closed our eyes away from status quo. And we said, Lord, we trust you. If we perish, we perish. This man you call your pastor and your father. You see him stand here and you just laugh. But this man is a testament of endurance. He will tell you of times that even though he said, yes, Lord, it was with tears in his eyes. His wife is here as a testament. Results don't just happen. No. If you see men possess the land, go behind that land, you will see the graves of giants there. They killed giants and buried them. Run away from any land where you see only champions without the graves of giants. Even Jesus has his grave to show. Are we together? I'm not wasting your time. I want you to make constructive progress. There are some of you, God gave you a word. And if you had obeyed God and moved in faith by now, you would sustain the grace and the resources to override the bills of conferences like this. Based on your vision, God told you by now you should start doing it. But for five years you've been giving excuses in fear. God is speaking to you. Are you going to choose to honor me and experience glory? This beginning of miracles, John 2 said, that Jesus did in the presence of his disciples and he showed forth his glory. What was a miracle? An instruction. Take this risk, the risk of death. Fetch water and go and meet the rulers. Those days they didn't correct by counseling. You died immediately once you did anything against the king. How could you tell me to fetch water? People are thirsty. And you say, fetch it and start moving. Lord, should I really move? Move. These rulers are thirsty. I don't want to embark. This is a feast. It's not a rehearsal. Move. Recently, sir, as I round up, I was in Bonny Island. I had the honor of visiting the first cathedral, not only in Nigeria, but across maybe Central or West Africa. About 150 years old. Where men like Samuel, Ajayi Crowder, Joseph Johnson, all these men were there. I had the opportunity to look at these things. And I saw an old pulpit. And while they were giving me an orientation about what happened there, they said, the man, I saw an emblem of fire. The man was going to preach. And just when he was going to preach, he found out that he forgot his notes. There was nothing there. And yet he was going to talk to people. That was a moment of destiny. If he did not deliver at that moment, he would bring reproach to Christianity. And while he stood there confused in fear, he decided I will move anyway. And that was when the spirit of revelation fell on him. And in a way he could not explain, he began to teach scriptures. Can I tell you this? One of the ways that God defeats fear in your life is by bringing you face to face with it. That the thing that you are afraid of, God brings you face to face. You stare at it, it stares at you. Then you will find out after a while that you are no longer afraid of it again. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? When I saw that I was so blessed, I was so inspired, Christianity came to this country because of the sacrifices of men like so. 
And right now, hear me. You are standing, we're about to pray. The destinies of many are upon your shoulder. And God is telling you it's time to move forward. Even as we look forward to and hasten the day of his coming. This 11th hour of this global harvest. God is looking for men and women of courage. Of courage and strength. It's time to conquer fear. It's time to call it what it is. You are a spirit. And I'm tired of living in fear. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. This is what God is telling someone. It's time to learn to walk on water. The water will not change to cement. Oh, dear child of God. There are times he can part the sea. There are times he can say, walk on it. The most important thing is that he's the one speaking. Whatsoever he says to do, do it. Are you ready to pray? Prayer point number one. I conquer the spirit of fear. I call you by name and I declare that your power and your influence is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. What a life. The spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But the spirit of power, of love, of a sound mind. Someone is praying. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I cross the spirit of fear over my life. Cross it over your children. Cross it over your ministry, your business in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. The fear of death, the fear of limitation, the fear of weakness, the fear of ministry. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are going to mention everything you know that seems to be a fear limiting you. Call it by name and say in the name of Jesus, I come by the blood against you. Lift your voice and pray. Is it finances? Is it your health? Is it your children? Call it by name and declare in the name of Jesus. Who are down mountain before Zerubbabel? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. Jesus. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now you are going to pray and you are going to declare that instead of fear, the spirit of grace to advance. And as you pray, I'd like you to move forward prophetically. Grace to advance. Lift your voice and pray. I advance by grace. I conquer fear. The grace to advance. The grace to advance in the name of Jesus. The grace to advance in ministry. The grace to advance in career. The grace to advance by the power of the Holy Ghost. The grace to advance in the name of Jesus.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Psalms 18 verse 29. We're wrapping up. Psalms 18 and verse 29. Everybody please read. It's projected. One to read. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God I have leaped over a wall. Is someone ready to pray? Father, the grace to run through a troop and leap over a wall. I obtain that grace. Lift your voice and pray. Financial walls, marital walls, ministry walls, I leap over in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, we are wrapping up. Please make it as a covenant. That you will not miss the remaining sessions of this conference. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I apologize. But let me just, I just saw light coming on four people. I want you to bring them here. This light, because I'm seeing that tonight there is a massive deliverance, not only from the spirit of fear, but the effect of that fear on God's people. I'm stretching my hands. Please bring them. I just saw that light. I have to pray that prayer. The power of God is coming on them, that light. And I want you to just bring them here. Help them, please. Bring them. Here at Word Alive, we command the spirit of fear. We are a spirit and we decree and declare. The spirit of fear. I release my faith. With that of Reverend Godwin Aban, we are declaring fear over God's people. My God, my God. You came to church. This house is a house of power. We declare fear by the spirit of grace in the name of Jesus let God's people go now shout a loud amen let God's people go now 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 let God's people go now. Hear me. Every spirit of fear that has stopped you from making progress, tying down families, tying down destinies, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I command that spirit, go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. and tomorrow I speak to you joining faith with the angel over this house you will return with testimonies of strange doors that have been apakatapa testimonies of strange doors in the name of Jesus Christ hear me every family here that is under any kind of bondage I stand by the God of heaven and the God that honors this altar, I decree and declare that bondage is broken now. Broken now. Broken now.
Hallelujah. Now listen please. Tomorrow, I want you to invite everyone. This is not just a word of life conference. This is God visiting a territory. Don't leave your loved ones behind. Some of you, once you are here, the Holy Ghost is ministering to you. You know there are people who should be in this conference because they need to encounter the power of God. Do well to sow that seed. Come, if there's no space, I'm sure there are overflows. Sit there with your heart open. Please participate in all the sessions because there are things that I'm going to be showing you from scripture and in this conference we are we are going to we are not only going to open gates we are going to break them completely in the name of Jesus Christ but for tonight the word for you is fear not God hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart, that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you